my name is Terry Schultz. And this is the Crystal Environmental Quality Commission um, April meeting. Okay. And we have Terry McDaniel here from the Minnesota Beekeepers Association to talk about bees and swarms. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks for introducing me. And I'm really happy to be here to talk about honeybees. Well, I'm a member of the Minnesota Hobby Beekeepers Association and um, I've been a beekeeper for about 13 years. And I have um, my bees in, um, my back sure. in Nokomis. Okay, so swarming season is, is coming up. It's May through September and most mostly May and June. And um, it's a natural occurrence for honeybees to swarm. And they usually fly between 10 a.m. and two, or 10, yeah, 10 in the morning and two on sunny days. And um, it's the queen and about 5,000 or 2,000 20,000 workers will fly and gather on a branch or something. And the reason that the, they swarm is they are running out of space in their colony. And, um, and maybe the beekeeper didn't give them more room to put the honey in and the nectar that's coming in. So when they run out of room, um, they will divide and they'll take the queen and the older bees and then they'll leave other bees. The other bees will make their own queen. So while they're in the swarm, there's scout bees that are going around and looking for a hollow in a tree. And you know, we don't really have any dead trees anymore or we always you know, we keep them cut down. So we try to intercept and we'd like people to call in when they see a swarm and we, will, we volunteer to go out and save the bees. And um, they can stay there. Um, for just a few hours or up to two to three days. And um, what happens is if the scout bees find a place that they will all swarm to, that could take a few hours or they could maybe not find anything. And so hopefully that's when we can come in and save the bees. And so in, while they're in a swarm, they are temporarily homeless. They have no babies to take care of. They have no food. What they did before they swarmed is they ate, they just engorged themselves with honey and that's their carbohydrate to kind of like live through because they don't know how long it's going to be when the, until they can find a new place to set up and start building comb and then bringing in food to feed themselves. So they're, they have no queen, well, the, they have the queen in the swarm, but they, they, they don't have anything to protect. So they're very calm. They're just like waiting. They're just waiting and they're very full because it's like, you know, how you eat a lot after Thanksgiving, you're just like, you just want to sit around and watch the football game. Well, that's how they feel really lethargic. So they're harmless. They're just, they just want to wait for them to find for the workers, uh, the um, scout bees to tell them where, where we're moving. So then let's go to the next slide. Um, and so what happens is the queen, I just wanted to show you a picture of the queen. That's a marked queen. And um, then those are the workers. And then they, they actually, what they do is they, when they know they're gonna be swarming, they put the queen on a diet. And she uh, is not a flying insect, she's a laying insect. She, all her life, she lays eggs every day in the, in the summer, like 2000 to uh, like 1500 to 2000 eggs a day. So they put her on a diet. So her fallopian tubes and all the eggs, you know, everything dries up and smaller so she can lift herself to fly. And that's where the bees will follow her and then clump around her. And that's what they, that's the swarm. Okay, you can go to the next picture. Um, and so the queen, what the, what's left, and let's just hold here. What's left is, um, the the bees will see this see those three lumpy things they look like you can go to the next slide there's a close-up the next slide is um a closer up see that one looks like a peanut that's a queen in there and so what happened when those when the swarm left when all those bees left before that they the the workers that are in that colony gave several like maybe eight to ten eggs, um, more royal jelly. All the, all the eggs get royal jelly for like three days. And if they are planning on swarming, they'll give, they'll take 
several eggs and give them uh, three more days. So it's, well, it's no, no, they give them, yeah, six days of royal jelly, which gives those female eggs everything they need to become fertile. So when, um, so right now this colony is queenless, but then when these emerge, they emerge in 16 days from an egg to emergence is 16 days. And if two queens emerge at the same time, they kind of duel each other until the strongest one wins. But if one, one comes out, one emerges and the workers are like, the queen is born, abort the rest. So they'll just take the other, you know, queen cells that look like peanuts and they'll chew the sides out and then they'll drag that pupa out. And a, a beekeeper can tell which uh, cell was the one that the real queen, the live queen is, is because on the bottom will be a hole because she chews her way out of the bottom. And then the ones that we see that have like a hole on the side, those are the ones that the workers decided no more queen. We don't want to have any fights, just get rid of them. Okay, then go to the next slide. And so that's how a new colony is started. But a beekeeper, you can hold on here. A beekeeper, if you know, it, every season is different. Last year, the swarm season came really early and we weren't really prepared. So there were a lot of swarms. Like, like people weren't thinking that, I don't know, it's, it's, we have to deal with the weather. There's so many different variables when you're a beekeeper. So it's never really the same. You really have to pay attention to just, we check our bees like every, every seven to 10 days. But anyway, so in a swarm situation, if you see a swarm, and I'll show you some pictures of what they look like, um, just if you see them landing outside, um, we have a guy through our association and he's our swarm chairman, his name is Bob Sitko, and you just need to call him. And this should be a public thing. Everybody can call him. There's no, he's our chairman. And we have a list of beekeepers throughout Minnesota, mostly in the metro area that will collect the bees for free. And so his number is 651-436-7915. And if the swarms, if a, if a homeowner or a business finds bees in their home or in the building, um, we have Alex King and Randy Fisk who um, are like construction, they can put walls back together. And so Let's go to the next slide. Um, but it's it's always, every situation is slightly different. Let's hold on this one. So we do it as a public service and you should expect to pay, no, no, you know, you shouldn't expect to give the, the beekeeper money. Um, and like if money is exchanged um, in an outside swarm um, via, via a verbal agreement, the beekeeper has obligations um, to protect the homeowner and the beekeeper may not realize that he may be liability if something he may have a liability if something happens if if he's paid so we do it for free as a public service and um, in, if it if you do see a swarm of honeybees inside and they're already establishing um, a colony a home um, there is a cost for repairing the building once they take the bees out okay let's go to the next one And so here, this is a video of actually my bees. They swarmed from my tree house. And I'm just showing you what it looks like in case people need to see what it looks like. You can play this one. And then, so you can kind of see like, it might be devastating, but a person could walk through this, the bees. They're just flying, they're leaving. These are the bees that just really ate a lot of honey and they're full and they're fat and they're, lazier but they're they're flying around and they're looking for well the queen landed and when i was watching this i i'm like oh my god they're gonna land on my little tree and they did is the sound up uh we muted on ours because otherwise video? we can't hear you yeah oh. the buzzing's really loud Right. Oh, got it. Okay. So anyway, I'm showing, yeah, go ahead. I'm showing um, that they're harmless. See, I put my hand in them. I touched them. You can, um, you probably don't want to do this yourself if you don't understand that. <laughs> but a person that understands the bees 
they even sound different if they're angry. But anyway, so they landed on my tree and they actually didn't last very long. And then they swarmed and they just, I tried collecting them in a couple different ways. And um, they basically right before my eyes took off and flew over the alley over a hu huge tree. So here, these are just some pictures of what swarms look like and what we'd have to do to get up there. Um, and that's what it looks like on the inside. And lots of times people, homeowners will just be curious and come and watch. And the bees will just walk right into the box. This is a box. And here I'm taking a picture of the bees walking into the box, which is basically like a beehive box. And here, this, I'm just showing that the bees can land anywhere. This one was on a sidewalk. And they're just in a clump like this, waiting for the scout bees to come back and tell them we found a new spot. And this one was from a tree that fell down and we had to siphon the bees. Um, Alex has a, um, a vacuum that takes the bees up and then we can take the comb. And this was a bunch of bee, this was in South Minneapolis. And whenever a swarm is caught, neighbors come and it's really a good way to educate people. It's a good time for them to be around it and not have fear. And this was the team that uh, worked on that one. And then just hold this for a second. Um, so these are some resources that are local. Um, the Minnesota Hobby Beekeepers Association, there's the website. And then the University of Minnesota Bee Lab, and um, that's their website. And Pollinator Friendly Alliance and the Xerxes Society. And these are all good resources. Um, they have pictures. I know on our website, we have pictures, we have, you know, pages of bees where you can see what a honeybee looks like, what a wasp looks like, and a hornet. So sometimes people have a hard time telling difference between the insects, but, um, and the bee lab is great. And a lot of these, you'll find out information about how you can help the bees and um, what's affecting them. So we can go to the next slide. And then I have more videos on YouTube. If you go to T McD's Bees, you can, and here's the titles of the other um, swarm uh, that I caught, if you wanna see the answer. Yeah, Terry, two minute warning. Okay, and actually, I think that's one more. Yeah, thank you for watching. And then, so if, if anybody has questions, we can just let this play and it's just kind of pretty to watch. This is a poppy. I have poppy seeds, I love poppies and the honeybees get pollen from them.